Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this quick tip video, we're actually going to be taking a look at regex inside PowerShell. Now, I'm not going to be going super into detail of regex. I'm going to assume some sort of uh, knowledge of regex, but I will be covering uh, some of regex. Uh, if you guys would like a full video on just reg a regex, which is regular expression, uh, please let me know in the comment section down below, and I can definitely do a more fully detailed explanation of just regular expression on its own, because regular expression isn't just used in PowerShell, but is used in uh, various other programming languages, pretty much any programming language that you can really imagine, you can really use regex or regular expressions. Uh, there is a very good site for regular expressions that I use, and that I'll be showing you guys on this video. Um, which is the regex R. Um, so this is what I use to test out my regular expressions before I put them into my code. Um, so I'll be showing you guys how I kind of use this to help me and show you guys what you can actually do on this website to actually more easily develop your regular expression patterns that you're going to be using in PowerShell or anything else as well. Uh, but if you guys do want a little bit more of a detailed video on regular expressions, once again, just let me know in the comment section down below. And let's actually get started with the regular expressions here. So what we're going to want to do is I actually have two files here. Um, so we have two files with just some text in there. And I've put in some fake social insurance numbers. That's what we have here in Canada and a social security number, uh, which is what the United States has. And I, I don't know if other countries have this as well, um, but these are the two that I've used for our examples today. Since they are slightly different, I want to be able to, uh, for us to be able to detect the differences. And then in the second file here, I actually have an email address. I have this series of characters, which is the amount of characters that you would have in a credit card number. And then I just have the name of the channel here, um, but these are two separate text files. So we're actually gonna be able to use some regular expressions to actually find data in our text files. So let's go ahead and let's just actually play around with regular expressions uh, just a little bit here, just to kind of see what it all entails. Um, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is uh, create a string here that we can play around with before we actually get into our files. So let's just create a variable called test string here. And I'm just going to make this equal to a my name is Jack Programmer. I love PowerShell. So we have a pretty simple string. And um, Let's go ahead and let's just put in a series of numbers here, just one, two, three, four at the end. And this, we should be able to actually do quite a few simple examples here. So the way that we would actually use regular expressions to match this string, there's actually a couple different ways that you can do it in PowerShell. I'm gonna show you two ways that I find are probably the easiest and most um, intended way that you can really do it. Uh, so the first way is we're going to take our test string variable and then we're just going to do a space and then we're going to go ahead and go ahead and do a match parameter here. And then we can go ahead and already put our regular expression in here. So what you can actually even do is not even really use regular expression, but just put in the word jacked here. And if we go ahead and we look at this, we actually get a true. So the word jacked was in our string, which we can of course see that very well. Um, and then if we do a jacked with two Ds, we will find out that it is not true. So if we actually go back and just put it with the D here, what we can also do in PowerShell is we have a variable called matches. Uh, which actually stores all the matches here. So if we actually look at that, we can actually see the value was actually matched on jacked here. So that is one way to do it. Now, the way that I actually prefer to do it here is we actually take our string, we pipe that to a select dash string, and we pass in a pattern 
And we can go ahead and pass in the exact same pattern here. And if we actually go ahead and we look at this here, we will see that it returns us the entire string and the pattern that we actually wanted is highlighted. So I actually find that is very, very nice with the select string. That's kind of why I prefer this way, uh, but definitely both ways do work. Now, another thing that you can actually do with regular expressions and PowerShell is you can find, let's say, all the words that are over uh, four characters long. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a test string. We're going to do the select dash string. We're going to do a pattern. So now this is going to really get into regular expressions here. So we need to put in our pattern. So to match a any character, what that'll actually be is it'll be a backslash W. And this will be any word character. So this will actually include quite a bit. It'll include all your numbers and all of your alpha characters as well. Um, so A to Z, uh, regardless of capitalization, it will actually match and the numbers zero through nine. And we can actually see this as well as if we go into our website here, the regexer, and we can actually look at the cheat sheet here. And if we look, we can actually see that the W actually does highlight everything here. And we can actually go, uh, that's the cheat sheet, regular expression, character classes, and we can say word. And here it will actually show us the equivalent regex for just slash W. So it'll match everything from uppercase A to uppercase Z, lowercase a to lowercase Z, zero through nine, and then the underscore as well. So that is a easy way to kind of know what the slash W is. And if you do a slash capital W, it'll be any character that is not in this set. Um, so just be aware that you can do quite a few things with the built in um, presets with regular expressions. So if we actually just try this right now, we're going to see uh, that we actually only get one match and it is M, but we know based on our website here, it should actually match every single character in the string really. And that is where the parameter all matches will come in with the select string commandlet. And now if we actually go at it, there it is, it highlighted every single uh, character we have except for the comma because we know that comma is not part of the slash w set. Now let's say we only wanted words that have four or more characters in it. So we want name, jacked programmer, love, PowerShell, and these numbers. We would actually add a curly bracket here. Curly bracket. And then all we would do is do a four comma, and we can leave it blank. Now, if you did have a specified max number, let's say we only wanted words between four and five characters long. So we don't want Jack programmer. We don't want PowerShell. This is what you would actually do. And if we actually go ahead and we actually still find it because it is still at least four to five characters long, and we can have uh, so we have five here, and then we have another four, five here, and then we have another five here. So that's how it breaks it down. I will actually be showing you guys how to do the boundaries as well. So now that we only want to match the name, the word name, love, and one, two, three, four, what you would actually have to do is add these boundaries. So that will actually be a slash B and a slash B at the end. That will make sure that there is a boundary at both ends of the string. So if we actually go ahead and input that, there it is. We have just name, love, and one, two, three, four. Now let's say we only really wanted to match the strings themselves, like the actual just words. We don't want the one, two, three, four. 
what we would actually have to do is change this slash w to be an a dash z all uppercase and then an a dash z all lowercase. Now in our case, all we really need is the a dash z lowercase because we don't have uppercases in here. Um, but we would of course want to match on if there's anything uppercase if we ever needed to. So if we actually run this now, we only get those two words that are highlighted. The number isn't highlighted, the longer words aren't highlighted or anything like that. But if we all of a sudden wanted, let's just get anything over four characters, we can remove that five and we can actually grab all things that are over the length four or over. It will actually highlight all those matches. And if we, again, if we remove the all matches, it will only return the first match that it finds. So I always find myself making sure that I put the all matches in there just to be positive of what I am finding. So that's for the simple strings. Now let's actually go ahead and um, see what we actually found in here. So if we actually look, we can see that they're all highlighted, but what we can actually even do is store that in a variable here. So let's store that into results. And what you can actually do is if you look at results afterwards, we're going to see it's not that different, but what we can actually do is a dot matches and a dot value. And if we actually look at this here, we actually get only the four words that were matched. So we can actually then programmatically take all the matches that we got and maybe do some sort of other algorithm that we need to do with those. Maybe we want to find all these things in one file and then look for those exact words in other files or files that start with that are named one of those things. Um, those are all things that you can actually easily do with the select string. So let's actually go ahead and let's test out regular expressions with our files here. So let's go ahead and let's create a variable called path. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to just take the path of our folder here because we want to grab all the files. As always, we like to do that with the get child items. What I like to do is I like to just create another variable here called files. And we're going to do a get child item. We're going to pass in our path here. Now, even though I know that we only have one level in here, I always like to add the recurse just in case maybe we add some folders in here later on and some more text files, we always want to be able to actually search those and not really have to modify our whole script again. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Now there are multiple ways that we can actually use regex with files or regular expressions with files. So let's actually see some simpler examples. And then we're going to go into some a little bit more complicated examples. So let's do the first one here where we are actually just going to take the files variable itself and we are actually just going to pipe that to a select string and we're going to pass in a pattern and the pattern that we're going to pass in is a very simple pattern. All we want to find is three numbers in a row. Um, so as we know, we should actually have both of these files coming back because we have numbers in both of them. So let's go ahead and let's run this here. And there is our result. So what is neat about when you have a file and you're passing the files to the select string, it will actually tell you exactly what file it found it in, the line number that it found. And then it shows you the line that it found it on, as well as, of course, the highlighted portion that you're looking for. Now, once again, as you notice, it only found one match, even though there are matches here. You do still need that all matches to be able to find all the possible matches. And there you go. Now all of them will be highlighted. So there is all of our matches here for all these uh, digits. So as long as there's three digits that follow each other, we want to pull a match. So we can see that it did pull them all up, gave us the file names and the line numbers for those items. Now, let's actually go a little bit more specific and say that we want to find all the credit card numbers. Now, as I've mentioned, this is the exact numbers of a credit card number. 
Now, as we know, credit card numbers might be written like this. They might be written like this. They might even have um, some dashes here. So let's go ahead and let's write a simple um, regular expression that will help us find that. So let's do a files and we're going to do a select dash string and we're going to put in a pattern here. And our pattern, what we're going to do is we know that it is, um, it's basically four numbers, four numbers, and then four numbers. So let's go ahead and let's do a four numbers and then four numbers and then another four numbers. All right. So now if we actually go ahead and we look at this, we do find our credit card number, but we're just going to do the all matches just to be sure we do find that credit card number. Now, the only thing is now, if I actually manipulate the way that that credit card number is written, we will actually notice and we just have to actually get the, uh, we have to refresh our variables here to make sure that we get the new spelling. We'll actually see that we don't actually find it. I would actually have to add the spaces in. And now if we look at it, it will actually find it. But now we have the problem of if there's no spaces, it wouldn't be found. So we actually need to build some sort of regular expression that will help us determine whether or not it works for any type of situation. Now, this is where I typically use the regexer website. Uh, I don't actually know the actual name of this website. That's always what I've just called it here. Um, but here is the regular expression here. So we have our files here. So let's go ahead and let's just copy paste this expression in there. And there it is. So we don't find it, but as soon as we put the spaces in there, we can see that it does highlight it. So what we actually need to do is we need to say if there's a white space or if there's a dash, or if there's none of those, then actually keep track of that. So what we actually want to do is in between the four W's is we're going to add a set of parentheses. And then what we want to do is add another set of parentheses inside and inside the nested parentheses, we're going to do a backslash S, which is a white space character. So this will match any white space character. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a pipe here, which is going to be the or a dash. And then outside of the nested parentheses, we're going to put a star. So this will actually mean if there's a white space or a dash or neither. So if there's zero or more entries of this, it will actually find it. So then what we can actually go ahead and do is go ahead, copy paste this into here. And there it finds it. And now if we actually remove the spaces, it finds it as well. If we add the dashes, it will find it as well. So what we can actually do is copy this back into our pattern here. And if we go ahead and we look for it, we can actually find it. And if we put it back to how it was before, and we go ahead and we run this entire thing. We will see that we still find it. Now, of course, this isn't perfect. This will not find all credit card numbers. The nice thing about this website as well is that there are community patterns and there is pretty much a pattern for anything that you can really think of unless it's very custom. Um, but there is a credit card um, regular expression. As you can see, it will actually find all sorts if there's dots separating the numbers um, or anything like that. Now, of course, I actually made my credit card. Um, I just noticed I actually forgot the four numbers. It should actually be 16 digits total. Um, but you guys do see that we can easily have this pattern here just like that. Now, there is one thing about this website here is if you go ahead and copy this entire pattern, it will not actually work. Same thing on is this one is a little bit better because you can't highlight these gray characters. But if you do highlight a pattern from here, 
which I'm going to show you guys in just a second, uh, it will actually not work. You do have to do some slight manipulation in just removing the slash G at the end and the slash at the front for it to work in PowerShell. But after that, it works just fine. Um, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at some other, uh, just some simple examples here with the boundaries and the social insurance number. So if we actually try to find the social insurance number here, let's do a select dash string uh, pattern. And let's go ahead and let's put in our pattern here, which the social insurance number is three numbers separated by dashes. So let's go ahead and let's find that. Now, as you can see, we do find that not a problem here. And we're going to do all matches. And it gets found pretty easily. Now, as we know, we probably shouldn't have these dashes directly in there in case someone doesn't put dashes. So let's go ahead and let's just put our uh, custom thing that we've made here, which basically says if it's a white space or a dash uh, or nothing, still find it. And if we actually go ahead and we look for this, we will actually see that we actually got a false positive on our social insurance number because it's also pulling up our credit card number. So that's where, again, we can add the slash B at the front and the slash B at the end. And now if we go ahead and we run this, it will only find our social insurance number. Well, so that is perfect. That's how we can easily find it. Now, another one that might be very useful that you might use in your everyday life, well, maybe not every day, but uh, fairly often in a production environment is maybe email validation here. So we do have an email in our file. So maybe we want to find if someone puts their email in there, because maybe uh, what we have done is we've taken a whole bunch of files from somebody and they know that they've written their password for their email somewhere, but they don't know where they might have probably put their email in that file right above the password. So if we can find where their email is, we can maybe find their password as well. Now, of course, I don't recommend ever doing this. Don't ever put your password in a file with your email in it. Uh, that is not very secure. Uh, but if you do have the, that situation ever arise, this is what you can do to easily find where the email is. So let's go ahead just copy paste this line and we have a fresh pattern now as i've said before is this website will have a lot of patterns that are already pre-made and email is definitely one that i don't really like to write myself uh, it is quite long as you can actually see down here this is the actual pattern um, so what i like to do is let's just actually highlight the entire thing and let's copy it and the only thing that will actually cause an issue here is we do need to use double quotes um, because you are allowed to use a single quote in an email. And at least that's kind of what is in the regular expression. Um, I believe that they actually have it as it's a not allowed character. Um, so there we have it. Um, so we can actually have this pure email validation here. It looks very, very complicated. And that is another thing about regular expressions uh, that I've read in the past as well is they don't recommend it for your production scripts. Always try to use something other than regular expression if you can. Um, it is very CPU intensive and also very, very hard to read if you come back to it later on, unless of course your code is very commented properly. It could be very confusing for the next person to go read it. So if we go ahead and we run this line, we will see that we actually didn't get anything. But we know that this is a fairly good expression. So if we take out the slash at the beginning and the slash G at the end, and we go ahead and we run it, our email actually comes up jimbob at gmail.com. So that actually did work properly. So there is one other thing that we can actually do here. Uh, and that, that is actually kind of scan each file and see if there's any type of sensitive information in it. So if there's a social insurance number, a credit card number, or a phone number or something, we can actually just kind of shoot a little warning and say, hey, this file actually has this information in it. Uh, so this would actually be a pro 
grammatically like a actual script example of where you can actually use your regular expressions to scan files. So let's go and do a for each file in files. And let's go ahead and open and close the curly brackets here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually create a variable called content. And we're going to do the get content on the actual file here. Uh, so let's do a path and then file dot full name. And then what I like to do is I like to just do a write output looking at file and then we're going to go ahead and put the file dot full name here. And then what we can do is actually use a switch statement afterwards. And now the switch statement actually has a regular expression or regex parameter. And then we're going to put in the string that we want to evaluate the regular expression on. And we can do an open and close in curly bracket. And we can actually put all the different patterns that we want to match it on. So let's go ahead and let's just grab our first one here, which is our made up credit card number, of course, because we don't have 16 digits in here. Um, but let's go ahead and let's open the case here. And we're going to do a write warning. And let's write the warning of file may contain a credit card number. And we can do another one here, which is going to be this one here, which is going to be, it may contain a SIN number. Uh, so we'll do that. And let's just copy this warning here. Uh, may contain a, a SIN. And now if we actually copy the same exact one here, we're gonna have a different one, which is gonna be the social security number which is three characters, two characters, and then four characters. There it is there. And let's go ahead and let's do a, uh, what else is in here? That's fine. That is fine as well. Um, yeah, let's just do this. So this will tell us if a file contains a social insurance number SSN or credit card number. And then let's just do a default here, which is going to be write host. We're going to do a write host here because what we want to do is we want to do a foreground color, uh, which is green. And let's just say file is okay. So if we go ahead and we launch this here. Um, yes, yeah, so it is actually looking at each line here. So we're not going to want to actually do this default here. So that is fine. So let's go ahead and let's look at this. So here we have in test one, we have here that it may contain a social insurance number, uh, which we know it does. And it may contain a social security number, which we know it does as well. And then the second file will actually contain a credit card. So that is actually perfect as well. So what we can actually do here is if we have a flag equals false flag here, what we can do is if these ever come up, we can actually put the flag uh, to true here. So if it ever finds any of these, we can actually flag it as true. And then if flag is equal to false, still at the end, this is where we can actually say write post foreground color is green. And then we can say file is okay. And now let's go ahead and run this here, this for each loop. And there it is. Obviously, we didn't get any file is okay because we don't actually have a file that is actually safe. 
So let's add a file here. We're going to do a test three dot text. This is a safe file and let's save that. And let's go ahead and let's reload our files here. And let's go into the for each loop. And we should have the test one is not safe because we do have some warnings. Test two is not safe because we have some warnings. Test three is okay. There's no data in there that we need to worry about. Doesn't have a social insurance number, social security number, or a credit card number. So this is a very good way um, to actually scan maybe uh, your entire entire file server to make sure that your users aren't storing very sensitive information in their files. Um, maybe if you're working for a company that deals with a lot of finance data, you wouldn't want credit card numbers to just be in plain text. Or if you're dealing with health um, details, maybe they have uh, some health card numbers or some, some social insurance numbers or social security numbers. This is a great way that you can scan your entire file repository and make sure that there's no sensitive information in there um, with PowerShell. So that is really the basics of regular expressions with PowerShell. If you guys would like to see more of these types of videos with regular expression, please let me know in the comment section down below. It is a topic that is often very skimmed over, uh, but is actually can be very, very detailed and is sometimes very useful depending on the situation that you have at hand. Also, please be sure to uh, check out the website in that description. I'm gonna post that link to the website in the description so you guys can test out your own regular expressions. And also be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.